Occasionally, a movie isn't as simple as being good or bad, worth a watch or not. Sometimes a film can be something that you don't enjoy but still appreciate aspects of, or enjoy with the understanding that it isn't very good. Such is the case with Long Legs, the latest horror movie to gain broad cultural notoriety amongst many lovers of film and horror, thanks to commentary from both camps gushing over its presentation and subtlety compared to its contemporary horror peers, perhaps making it this decade's It Follows, if you will. Well, I sat down to watch it, and I'm still on the fence about it. So let's take a deeper dive. Long Legs introduces us to Lee Harker, a young lady FBI agent, which I refer to her as because the film does, on the path of Long Legs, a serial killer ascribed to the grisly murders of several families, each of whom includes a daughter whose birthday is on the 14th day of the month. The twist is that the murders all consisted of the father slaying each family member before taking his own life, with notes found at each scene written by Long Legs. So the killer, in this case, is someone who hasn't technically killed anyone. Like Jigsaw, except that Jigsaw absolutely killed people and you're an idiot if you try to argue otherwise. Anyway, Harker, a young and plucky FBI agent, is called up to investigate by William Carter, her superior, and the hunt for the mysterious murderer is on. Now that might sound like a cracker of a setup, but the problem with Long Legs is that once the movie puts these intriguing pieces in motion, it mostly fumbles the bag. After spending more than half the film piecing together clues to the mystery of Long Legs, we learn that Lee Harker is essentially investigating her own life. She deciphers Long Legs' mysterious letters by literally being given the key to decode them. She finds out his identity because she met him when she was a child, and she discovers that she had a photograph of him because her boss literally instructs her to go home and her mother literally tells her where it is. Many people, including journalists and even the film's director, have compared this movie to Silence of the Lambs, what with it being the tale of a timid, meek, young lady FBI agent hunting a serial killer. But I think that is wildly offensive to Silence of the Lambs. Clarice Starling is a fresh-faced agent lacking in experience, yes, but the movie is the story of her overcoming that by becoming sharper, more courageous, and quick-witted. It is literally the story of her ascending into someone more capable over the course of the narrative. Long Legs is a story of a dedicated but inexperienced FBI agent being dropped into an investigation that she was already at the center of, but didn't know it. So, unless she happens to have been stalked by other serial killers as a child, it doesn't really set her up as being on the path to becoming a prolific investigator. I feel like a more accurate comparison for Long Legs would be the movie Seven. A young, inexperienced homicide detective partners with an older detective to hunt a serial killer with very little evidence and ultimately, the protagonist becomes deeply entangled in the killer's goals. The Ring would also be another good one, as Long Legs uses a lot of sudden sound cues, visits to a farmhouse, and an interview with the villain's lone survivor at a mental institution. But if we need to compare it to Silence of the Lambs, I guess we can talk about Long Legs' proverbial Buffalo Bill, Nicolas Cage. Yeah, he's in it, he's the killer. He's mugging for the camera and being over the top and silly, and God, I just wish it weren't Nicolas Cage. I know that's not fair, but I just can't take it seriously because it's Nicolas Cage. You could have done so much with this character. He could be just as calculating and absurd and menacing, but not being Nicolas Cage would really have gone a long way. Also, after spending an hour setting up this supernatural murderous mystery, with the film practically saying to the viewer, ooh, what's happening? I know, but you don't know, because you don't know what I know, the movie commits the cardinal sin of just dumping all the information on us with multiple characters literally telling us everything that happened and why rather than, you know, doling it out in pieces for Harker, our window into the narrative, to uncover and not only show us, but her competence as an investigator. But enough dumping on this movie, let's give it some flowers. Because Long Legs, for as little as I think of its pacing, structure, and story, can't be summarized as being good or bad. The movie is shot beautifully, and its use of colors and sound design especially are a feast for the senses. There are scenes where Harker is terrified and trying to keep her composure in a tense situation, and her heavy breathing sounds so forward in the mix that it not only conveys her relative inexperience, it is unsettling for the audience. There's another scene where a character is shot and killed, but we see it from far away and from inside a house. And the sound of the gunshots is much lower and more realistic. It reminded me of something from the Coen brothers with that sense of detachment from violence that feels diminishing to the point of it being almost dehumanizing. 
The film takes place in the 70s and 90s, oh, I forgot to mention that, and the retro setting is conveyed smartly, not just in little details like photographs of presidents hung on the wall, but also in a lot of the editing choices. Scene transitions in particular are used to convey a sense of time by using zooms or dissolves that feel out of style with contemporary filmmaking, like their editing choices that come from the period that's being portrayed. Overall, the movie is extremely well acted, Nicolas Cage notwithstanding. Malika Monroe in particular delivers an outstanding performance with a lot of attention paid to nuance and small details. From the very first scene, we read her as someone who feels intensely uncomfortable in almost any situation. There's a tension about her that isn't intensity, just tense. Like she isn't comfortable in her own skin, and it's conveyed beautifully. Granted, this becomes a waste as the story lets her character down, but it isn't without being worth a mention. And that's Long Legs in a Nutshell. If you're the sort of person who can appreciate a movie for its merits in spite of its flaws, if you can appreciate things like the construction and composition of a film, all of the artfully presented parts that went into a story that kind of falls apart on its face, it might be for you. And if not, it might not. I don't know, I'm not your dad.